Okay, so we'll just start with a prayer. So just wherever you are, settle down and sit down comfortably. Close your eyes. Just take a moment to connect your breathing. If you're on a chair, keep your feet firmly on the ground, spine straight, shoulders relaxed. Stay with your breathing as you listen to the chant. So thank you everyone for joining this rather quick notification, responding to it. We just decided uh, it'd be great to hold a session of this nature, which we don't usually do, um, especially because what is coming up is a very important and flagship offering from Ritampara. And of late, we've been receiving a lot of uh, feedback when it comes to communicating about some of our offerings especially in the antaranga yoga space that it would help if there is more interaction because the brochures don't really communicate uh, the essence and the expectations that you can really what you would explore in the program and when i um, many of us kavita i when we responded to some of your queries it also we felt that it really helps when we talk to each other because that is when we are also able to sense what is it that you are looking for and uh, oftentimes as we listen to each other we are able to better uh, articulate and communicate what the program is about and whether it's something appropriate for uh, what life situation each person is in because obviously just because it's a, in our program, it's not appropriate for everyone. Uh, it is having some intensity and it does require certain uh, uh, practices as a prerequisite at times. So uh, we hope this will be a more frequent occurrence uh, and we will be able to hold more webinars. So just to give you a short uh, introduction of uh, what today's session is about, um, we have few of our um, facilitators from Ritambara Ashram in this call. So myself, and then Kavita is here and RK. Um, so some of us have been uh, part of Ritambara for a while, learning with Raghu and Shashi and uh, learning Yoga Sutras and practicing Antaranga Yoga. And today's session specifically, as you may have seen in the poster, is to share a few things around the framework of Saptasura and uh, we have with us also a few people who have done Saptasura in the past so perhaps they will also be able to share a little bit about their experience in the recent past um, but more importantly it is also to have a conversation with each of you because obviously something about the brochure poster or 
the program may have raised some curiosity. That's our hope. And that's why you are here. So one thing which could help us in making this 45 minutes quite meaningful and engaging will be if you can keep your videos on and uh, that will help us also see what you are feeling when you speak to you uh, so that's an invitation and uh, on that note uh, Kavita do you want to add something before we talk about the program or other things yes just a little bit of Ritambara and uh, you know you want to say something about yeah, so uh, I don't know how many of you have been, uh, I can see a lot of new faces. So perhaps many of you may not have attended a Ritambara program before. So Ritambara Ashram is physically located in Kothagiri, uh, in the Shola forest in Nilgiris. And it was uh, co-founded by a group of youngsters along with uh, Rekhu and Shashi, who are our mentors and stewards of the space. Um, Ritambara Ashram as such is focused on uh, delving deep into Indic knowledge systems. So some of the areas that we focus on as part of our studies and uh, research and uh, offerings are yoga. And in yoga, most of us are familiar with the yoga that is relating to asana pranayama uh, or kriyas and things like that which is broadly categorized as Bahiranga Yoga, it is external. Whereas uh, in Ritambara, our focus is on what we call as Antaranga Yoga or Inner Work Through Yoga, where the programs and offerings are tuned to help you uh, locate who am I and where am I and why am I here in this life context. So every program in Ritambara is focused on deepening this awareness of our identity of the patterns that we hold and as a consequence of it the kind of choices we make oftentimes we might be feeling limited in our choices at times we might have feel very choiceful but we might actually be playing out a compulsive pattern in life so what is the narratives patterns that we play out in life what is the meaning making processes that we uh, hold and what is the lens through which i see the world and how is it making my life meaningful or in our words rasatmik which is full of intensity and passion and colorful that kind of rasa is like the essence of our experience um, more subtler than uh, emotion so how can one live a life that is fully rasatmik that is the quest in ritambara and one of the verticals of the what we call as prikshams one of the uh, sciences or the fields through which we explore this is yoga and specifically our Behranga Yoga practice and Antaranga Yoga practice is anchored in the tradition of Krishnamacharya. There are many schools of yoga these days, you, Ayengar Yoga or Ashtanga. Uh, Krishnamacharya is popularly known world over as the father of modern yoga. And uh, Raghu is the direct disciple of Krishnamacharya. And whatever we have received and we are practicing is what we've learned from Raghu and uh, also uh, Saras. Uh, she's the co-founder of Yoga Vahini was associated with Krishnamacharya Yoga Mandiram for a long while. Um, the other part of Ritambara is we focus a lot on Idhihasa Purana traditions of India, where we work with Mahabharata and Ramayana. So there are many offerings if you go to our website where it is, uh, we will see Mahabharata exploration, Ramayana exploration, Mahabharata immersion, Ramayana immersion, where we look at uh, the same Antaranga Yoga processes, but using stories and archetypes in the Idhihasa Purana as mirror. We are not going into debates of whether it happened or did not happen or that is not the level we are engaging in. We are looking at these as um, stories which have deep psychological uh, potential in terms of learning. And we engage with the stories in a way where we look at them as a mirror to delve deeper into ourselves. That is the other part. Then we have a, a section in Ritambara which delves into Indic identity. So we have a lot of discussions around what is the, how do we hold the heritage of our civilization? What is the process of colonization and decolonization that is happening? So there are a lot of programs, uh, at least a couple of them, which many of them are internal also, but a couple of them for the uh, larger world where we engage with these questions with activists and a lot of other groups who, or anyone who is passionate about understanding their own identity as an Indian and as a holder or a 
uh, someone who is part of the civilization heritage. So that is one, we call it Dharma Drishti. And we also have a very active Vastu Sangha. So as some of you might know, uh, Rekhu's wife Shashikala Anand, she is a world-renowned Vastu exponent, uh, who is also uh, a proponent and who has pioneered a, a field of Vastu called Chikitsa Vastu or healing Vastu. So we have some offerings in Rutambara which relate to understanding the interplay of space and energy. And there are many offerings, including Saptasura, and the program that we are talking about today is a, um, is a blend of yoga, ideas from Yoga Sutras, uh, Nati Shastra and Vastu Shilpa Shastra. So we'll be taking a little bit more time into going into what, what is that framework and what you can expect in case you decide to join in. Uh, but that's like a brief introduction to Ratambara and uh, we, we are a very young and diverse group of individuals from different walks of life uh, who are united in the quest for a Rasatnik living through an exploration of these Indic knowledge traditions and trying to practice it in a contemporary way. So the way our offerings play out is not just as a lecture or a training space where we talk, but it's mostly through experiential reflective activities where we initiate an idea, we have a contemplative dialogue, we use reflective art, we look, use process work. So it, based on the depth and the nature of offering, the kind of modality differs. But every offering is completely experiential. Okay. So that's like a brief introduction to the kind of work we do. Um, do you want to maybe introduce Saptasura? Yeah, I'll just go a little bit about the Antaranga part of it. Yeah. Um, so as uh, Hari mentioned, uh, uh, Bahiranga is, we all know asana, pranayama, sometimes even yama, niyama, what, you know, the, the how do I behave inside, outside, all that is one part. Then generally, we always heard yoga is also another part is samadhi, the meditation, you know, that's the other part. Antaranga part is that which we kind of most of the time we skip or it is just neglected where we are able to focus our mind on some point and thereby the meditation happens. Yeah, Here in our own context, we've taken that part of the ability to focus on our own selves, our own psyche, our own mind to be why, why should I focus on that? To be able to see what sometimes we are all, we are not ascetics. We are all living in a, as a householder, in a professional setup, as, you know, family uh, people with, with relationship. So there are sometimes I have certain ways of wanting to be this way. I want to be the best mother. I want to be uh, a certain kind of professional. But there are sometimes, these are my visions. These are my dreams. These are my aspirations. But Sometimes it, 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 there is something or the other, there's a block. I'm not able to see what's happening. I keep manifesting the same kind of relationship, the same kind of, you know, uh, blocks in, in certain box of my life. So how, what is happening here? So this program or any Antaranga Sadhana, our program gives you a, takes us to a place to locate ourselves, to be able to see our life from a bird's view, where I can see it like a, whole paridrishti we call it and to be able to see ourselves see our own behavioral pattern sometimes we are just stuck in one way of narrative with a certain relationship like for example my son i keep saying i i see him as an improvement plan all the time i got to see this i didn't know all this it just came in suddenly in one of my exploration i see how i have always felt like this he has to be an improvement plan no wonder there's so much of block how he perceives is another different, but what am I creating in this relationship? This view, as I see it myself from a little separate, separate myself from my, uh, my own habitual pattern, gives me a choice of see, going, choosing something else. I don't need to be habitually going in the same mode of thinking, of pattern, of behavior, or even, uh, you know, understanding myself. So this, Choice making is, is what we actually opens out in, in any kind of Antaranga Sadhana. Our whole aim of any Antaranga Sadhana is to be able to see our mental model, mental psyche, 
our habitual patterns, our compulsive patterns of thinking, what is the narrative we've said to ourselves inside. So when I step back and see I have a choice, I don't need to be compulsively active from these places. So Taptasura actually takes you through seven steps, seven words we have taken from the Indian traditions to be able to contemplate on these seven words, it's like a peak, it's like windows, you know, you just see our, our own self. Sometimes we are only, I can see only this much. I don't see what's nearby behind, but this is also part of me. So these words, uh, exploring, contemplating on them, using different frameworks, I get to see myself much clearly as a mother, as a wife, as a uh, professional, as a yoga teacher, as a friend. Where, where am I in all these things? So for the, 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 the framework shows directs us to be the best that I can be as an individual. To be able to, there are so many, most of the time there is a, we are born with the potential. We are born with a seed of, uh, you know, say I'm a mango tree or something. I'm, you know, there's a mango seed, but I don't realize this potential because I'm so blocked by the way I see life experience people and myself so to be able to take a step back and see the whole drama in a drama I can actually tap into my potential and be the best that I can be so that is the uh, Sattasara uh, that's a goal of at least any Antaranga Sadhana and Sattasara Hari do you want to explain the different uh, words yeah. in the... so um, see um, I think one of the things is uh, there are there are, there's not much of a lecture in this program. As Kavita said, uh, I don't know how many of you are able to relate to this term exploration. But we have certain activities designed around each idea, which will help us go deeper into understanding. See, there's a difference between if we say, okay, Maitri means friendship. Now, I can give a talk on friendship, but it does not really uh, help you in understanding what is the quality of the relationship in your life. So one of the swaras we explore, which is taken from Yoga Sutra is Maitri, which talks, which helps you. How am I experiencing relationships in my life? How can each encounter be a mirror to understanding where am I coming from in the relationship than who is the other person or what they are doing? So how do I know that? And in knowing where am I in the relationship, how can I invest in processes that build nourishment, invest in processes that build trust. These are the kind of questions that we will engage in. I'm just giving one example. So what I could perhaps do uh, to give you a sense of what to expect is I'm, I'll share the curriculum of this program. Okay, so once you're part of this from the last batch, once you join the program, there are eight weeks in the program. We start with the first week, we call it the Arambham, where we give a, a detailed overview of the kind of space that we are creating. So Kudam is an indigenous Indic model of learning space, where everybody who comes into that space temporarily keep aside their other role identities and engage as equals, as human beings. So we have a certain introduction to the learning space of that nature and the Swaras. And if you had a chance to go through our brochure, it is mentioned that a lot of our work is also anchored on Navarasa, the idea of Navarasa taken from Natya Shastra. So the first session will explore in depth, how am I experiencing these different rasas in my life when I engage and experience something in my life, when I encounter a person, when I listen to something, when something happens out of the blue, what happens to me? What is the feeling space? And what kind of narratives am I getting in touch with? So this is something that we will go in depth in the first session, following which every week we will take up one swara. First week, it will be the Maitri, which will focus on the world of relationships. And then we will go into the space of Karma, which is the action space. Every action that I do, how can I locate where am I? From what, what part of me is that action arising from? Is it a reactive space or is it a space from where I can really am making a choice? So is it coming from a space of freedom? And what are the other? So whatever you explored in week one, it's like a single thread. You'll be able to connect each week like a thread. How you would create a garland or something like that. 
so each leads to the other then we go into the space of dharma so dharma again it's not explored as a set of rules or injunctions that one needs to follow in life but it is ex explored as what is the ground that is nourishing and upholding where am i and am i being able to look beyond myself see the larger context of which i am a part and in this we'll be exploring our actions and relationships within the larger question of what is dharmic action or am i able to act in ways where i am enlivened and energized the person i'm engaging with is enlivened and energized and the larger context of which both of us are a part how is it impacted we look at this in depth in that week then we go into understanding the knowledge and the learning maps that we hold in our life so this jnana swara talks about the explorations are centered around how do i pursue knowledge am i looking at something as a any area of knowledge is something i need to acquire how do i learn from my adverse experiences or do i have a preference for learning from with only certain kind of people certain kind of experiences so what is the learning process that i have integrated into my life and how is it playing out in terms of enabling me in growing and embodying the knowledge then we go into the swara of ramyam ramyam is again taken from natya shastra it is the swara of beauty and rhythm we can be extremely efficient in life we can be extremely articulate and scholarly in our intellect but still if we don't discover a certain beauty and rhythm in day to day living and action everything else may look monotonous and dry so here we look at how do i discover the aspect of ramyam how do i discover the aspect of rhythm in my life and then we come to the yoga as the swara where yoga is explored as a processes that help me integrate my energies my potentialities so that i can then direct it to any field that i wish to explore we we'll look at that and the last week the eighth week is that of abhyasa where we look at how do i now bring together because no swara exists in isolation the moment i start exploring maitri for example the world of relationship immediately it will also take me to the swara of karma i i'll start asking okay what am i really doing here immediately it will also take me to the larger context is that my action dharmic how is it impacting the systems i am a part of so in abhyasa we look at how do i bring this all together in my day to day living in my practice space and after the eighth week we do have a, a fortnightly call what you are seeing here is the levo call living in and voicing out basically these are like catch up calls that we have uh, for two fortnights following the program where the community of uh, so we have we have a very limited uh, number of participants for these programs because it's a very in depth internal personal exploration we do not take more than 20 participants in a batch so this cohort of 20 they come together after two weeks share how their life is what has happened to them as they practice this and then we reflect back on that for a couple of sessions so broadly this is what you can expect through the program i know this looks very technical when i put it this way so what i would also invite because there are few people here who have attended the program in the last batch i think shruti is here uh, i can see a couple of others if any of you would like to share maybe in a minute or so how you experienced the program you are welcome to share and we can also take we have time for some question and answer on anything that any of you feel inclined to clarify anybody shruti do you want to share something uh, yeah uh, namaste everyone namaste hari kavita i see akanksha namaste rk and uh, i see rajam ma'am namaste ma'am um, so, just uh, one minute shruti just for the sake of those who don't know you shruti is a hindustani classical musician based in bangalore yeah okay shruti yep uh, i attended uh, last batch of uh, saptaswara and uh, it was really a very beautiful experience um and uh, this antarang yoga space is something um, which i am uh, totally attracted to and then that is how i ended up taking up uh, inner work through yoga which is currently going on um and uh, 
all the uh, throughout the weeks we explored all these maitri karma dharma and all the you know the seven uh, swaras or the seven aspects mm. um, each swara is very you know exploring each swara has been a very uh, nice uh, experience um very unexpected um, experience and uh, unexpected and beautiful um, for me <clears throat> a uh, very uh, intense thing that happened was uh, we were introduced to this uh, kaya madhya sutra um uh, uh, halfway through the uh, program and uh, um, uh, when i started to because i have been start uh, i have been practicing music for years now um, it was beautiful before but once i started to pay attention to the kaya madhya sutra as i sang as i practiced music at home um it was uh, it was something otherworldly it was like um, everything went away moments here and there the beautiful moments which uh, you know it's it does not matter what is happening in front of me or who is in front of me i am able to go to that dimension where i am totally lost and to and there is just music there um i have been you know uh, i have listened to great maestro saying that um art should be in the forefront the artist should be in the you know back when artist is in the front and art takes the uh, you know back seat then that is not effective um so we should um, i have heard maestro say that we should allow the art to pass through us i just intellectually i tried to understand i think but experience was very far away from me but through this i uh, i was and i am able to experience this beautiful thing uh, you know through yoga and uh, art so it's it's really um, very beautiful experience so um all of you i would love to invite all of you to take up this course um to to i know all of us uh, can witness beauty but um after this kind of programs i feel like we we start to uh, experience beauty in in those situations which are you know which we we think as which are not beautiful situations or which are so called negative situations or um we we start to experience beauty in sadness and that kind of uh, emotions is what i feel like and um, yeah this is my this has been my experience so far um thanks a lot thanks shruti shruti was sharing about one idea taken from vastu shilpa shastra called kaya madhya sutram but we apply in the we look at our body and apply it in that in the swara of yoga so thank you for sharing we also have vanaja here we'll just listen to vanaja also and then uh, if you have any questions feel free to put it in the chat or you can unmute after that and ask us vanaja yeah you can thanks hari thank you uh, hi good evening everyone um so for me uh, Uh, you know i started with uh, looking for you know i was at a time of um, a phase of life where i was really requiring some um, uh, something to anchor to and uh, look look inward and that's when the uh, understanding secret quest was uh, you know uh, just about to begin and uh, i looked at saptaswara and i thought this is just so beautifully timed that um, allows me to uh you know have an inward journey with uh, what is laid out as you know hari was explaining through the various uh, technical aspects but i think uh, for me personally uh, i really would like to share that uh, uh, the the reflections that came out of each session uh, and the way uh, it made us look inward and for me um, uh, really thinking about what it is what is evoking in me each time uh every day's experience was different the context was different the situation at home was different uh my own personal experiences and feelings or reactions to those situations were different but when uh, each week when we went through each of this uh, uh you know swaras 
uh, it made me look at it so differently and beautifully and uh, i was i was very much benefited by it uh, you know each of the swaras was giving me a very different dimension to look at and i learned a lot uh, to see how i can apply this in my daily life uh, not only that um, the uh, reflections were so deep uh, you know as we were going through the sessions also um, i found it very very uh, intense at the same time uh, the, the cohort uh, group that we were in allowed us a space of uh, you know uh, it never never gave me a feeling of okay how do i share my own personal experiences we have a group of 25 people um, you know uh, and it never threatened it was totally non threatening um, very very warm uh, allowed me to have a flow and uh, at the end of the eight uh, sessions and then the follow up sessions uh, i can say that uh, you know uh, even till date uh, i do ask myself what actually provoked uh, or what is the reaction where did it come from where is the trigger uh, there were some beautiful takeaways for me uh, to be applied in my daily life um, and uh, i really do wish uh, you know uh, in a family when if everybody is able to go through this at some point of time it will make the flow in the family very beautiful in the workspace uh, our own view towards the society and uh, external view uh you know some of the takeaways for me from just a simple swara like ramyam was immense uh, i never looked at ramyam that way uh, when it was laid out so uh, i can go on and on uh, i'm sure there is a time uh, 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 listen but if any of anyone wants to really hear a personal experience for me from my personal story i'll be more than happy to uh, share what i uh, took from this uh, course um uh, it's it's a beautiful foundation for a lot of inner work um something very different i've done a lot of other uh, uh, personal development and uh, you know one can think this is one of those but this really expects uh, you to be your own uh, yourself simply yourself and uh, you you can be absolutely comfortable so uh, i must thank hari and kavita and ragu Uh, for the beautiful um, uh, session we had and uh, i'm sure the if if and when a uh, lot of more participants are going to join this they are going to have a really beautiful experience so thank you thank you thank you so much vanisha any questions clarifications where are you what are you feeling right now are you feeling intrigued curious interested confused yeah maybe i can go uh, i have been looking forward to this hari yes rashmi yeah <laughs> not much to say just that i have been looking forward to this and really excited to get started with it okay look forward to seeing you hey hi I mean so first uh, for me this is the first kind of uh, webinar i am attending so i am little confused also and i am interested also because all these are very new for me so what means uh, there is a means when we say who i am so i think i am just like i am a daughter i am a mother or this questions only comes which is very near to me but then why we are going to search who i am that is first my <laughs> question so and if see in something is happening around me where people are starting to uh, search answer for this question so if you can guide me little so it will be more interesting otherwise it will be yeah. more confusing yeah. for me so i think uh, i don't know shilpa if you go to see our brochure but one of the uh, core ideas in our offerings is that 
see every civilization has its own idea of who is the hero and things like that uh, mm-hmm. in our civilization the householder or the grihastha is considered to be the ultimate hero so if you look at mythology and all you have janaka as somebody who is both a raja and a rishi rajarshi so one of the uh, quests of ritambara in this rasatmik living is to enable the householder to discover how can i experience this beauty rhythm dharmic action everything in the midst of all the compulsions and tensions of a daily householder and what vanija shared or shruti is sharing is all coming from that space because there is no uh, criteria that you have to be a scholar or you have to be a pandita to be part of any of these programs you just have to be very honest in looking at your life and you need to have a ardent desire to understand discover something deeper about yourself so that you can live a meaningful life if you have these two qualities i think you are very well suited to be part of the program and when you become part of the program as they shared it's a very deep learning sharing space and the, all the learning happens through sharing also so we have had people coming from arts we have had people coming from activism space people who are coming from corporate space your professional background or what you do otherwise doesn't matter your commitment to yourself and your life is what matters so all these explorations of maitri in relationship space or dharma these are our daily questions that we encounter just that sometimes we become used to or smart at suppressing it sidelining it distracting ourselves from engaging with this because these are uncomfortable questions but as you delve into it and you have a community to support you to go through that process it becomes very energizing yeah we also have suruchi here she is also one of the participants from the last batch suruchi would you like to share something about or maybe you can even respond yeah. to it hi mary hi kavita so good to see you and everybody else vanaja shruti rk uh, all old uh, and loving loved faces whom i have done many breakout sessions with um uh, hari had invited me in to share my um, experience with saptaswara uh, since i've done it almost a year ago and how the learnings have kind of percolated into my life and hopefully will continue to um for me uh, what continues to unpack from saptaswara is just how to lead my life firstly how to look at my oppression how i've oppressed myself how my uh, colonized mind has oppressed me through uh, so much of the learning that we've had uh, and how to shed that you know and but shed it and look at it with compassion you know just how to love myself a little bit more i think that has been one of the um, greatest uh, gifts of this course for me um and basically how with like a healthy body um and i think there were we had learned uh, we had the, the uh, things that were listed were healthy body ethical behavior and um, self discovery right hari uh, these were uh, the things which i want i try to practice in a dharmic way with ramyam to go towards shantam i think that sort of sums it up for me um and uh, they uh, the facilitators take you really really gently uh, um, uh through these concepts uh, they take you through the eight rasas and through the seven words that they have selected um, they do that through a process of art movement and deep sharing um and uh, it's amazing the answers that emerge when you go through the movement that they make you do and the artwork the truths that emerge in that silence you know the learning of with the methodology that they've used which is the swara uh, the three um, they, they have a methodology which they'll take you through which i found very helpful uh, especially the listening spaces you know the amount of uh, learning i had just listening to others and the thoughts that were coming up for me was very helpful for me um and uh, what continues to work for me is how i keep emerging from my victim space 
you know, and the judge that's sitting so strong in all of us and judging ourselves. Uh, so yeah, just holding myself with more tenderness, love, uh, holding others, just loving others more and just approaching life with, um, as Banaji also said, you know, for all of us, I think Ramyam uh, was such a discovery, Ramyam and uh, Maitri towards all. Uh, so those were some uh, really uh, amazing takeaways uh, for me. And I would say, just do the course, just do it. You will not regret it at all. It's amazing. It's fun. You look forward to it. And, uh, you know, you're going to learn to just live to your highest potential. You're going to just learn to live in a very rhythmic way, you know, with the abhyas, with the jnana. Um, so yeah, go for it, do it. Thanks, Sudeshi. So as you can see, we are all very into about sharing about the program, but after the sharing, most of you feel feel confused because ultimately it's an experience. So there's only so much we can share in words about it, um, but we try. I think this is better than reading the brochure. So yes, Vivek. Um, I have a question. Um, this program sounds very intense and it sounds very personal. Yeah. Uh, what is the what is the confidentiality that one can expect and how much are we expected to share about ourselves? There is no expectation of you have to share this much. What you will find as magical in this space, which is if you uh, look at that curriculum, no? Uh, we said there is something called the Kudam. So the space is created in such a way that each of us engage each other with complete confidence and trust. And whatever is shared within that space is confidential. Now, you are not, you are invited. There will be multiple invitations for you to share what are you in touch with. What will happen is, and this we have seen very consistently, Sometimes for me, somebody who might be for a first timer in the program, as you said, it could feel very intense. Oh my God, people are sharing such a personal thing. But after a point, you will realize while the content of the sharing might be personal, the underlying narrative or the story is universal. So oftentimes you might feel you are in touch with something very intense and uncomfortable, but you can't articulate it. But you might hear the same through another person in the group because the group energy gets created in such a way that people start helping each other articulate what the other person is in touch with, though nothing is actually spoken about it. So you won't have be under any pressure to share compulsively or share uh, in a very, uh, what do you say, we won't pressurize you in any way, but there'll be invitations to uh, share about what are you feeling, what are you in touch with, you can choose to just journal. So that we, we are not holding a criteria that only if you speak so much, you are getting something, you could be silent quite a bit and you can be really doing a very in-depth self-exploration. I think Kavita, you can add something if you feel. Uh, it is how much we want to bring in ourselves. There is no compulsion to say, share everything deeply. And how much ever I invest in the same energy, it comes back to me also. And the, the, the space that is created is so human. And so, um, I mean, if I say it's safe, it comes from a facilitator or from a organizing perspective it doesn't feel right actually but it is it is true it is true from the heart and it doesn't it doesn't harm in any way that that's at least a, the intention of the people who are attending and people who are facilitating so it is uh, you know in that way i would say very honest and uh, yeah safe that way Also, just to add, one of the ideas we work with also Vivek is that um, the learning is not a process of me acquiring something. It is a, we are also looking at it as a process of creating a certain resonance with each other. And in that moment, insights and discoveries happen to you. So it's a long program, eight weeks. You'll get a hang of it as you get into the sessions and take your own time to do that. Yes, Namrata. 
Hi everyone, uh, Namrata here. Um, I come from Mumbai uh, and um, very, uh, I think most of the programs that I have attended with Ritamra, um, I can safely say I've been the youngest at almost all of them. So uh, in terms of, you know, uh, Vivek Ji was mentioning, is it going to be something the, too intense? Um, uh, how much do I share? How much do I hold back? Um, I, very many times this would come to my head too, because I would often be among people who are, say, twice my age, thrice my age and all of that. Uh, but really, uh, fundamentally, I really believe that um, some of these programs are about um, human experience, which, um, which I mean, it's not about a certain situation. A certain situation may be very personal, which you may not feel so open to sharing, but the fundamental dimension that comes out through that is something that all of us go through. And in the sharing, it not just helps us realize what where we are at, even the listener realizes that, um, yeah, this, in fact, I am going through this too. So that was one thing. Uh, I want to just share about my experience. I had done Saptaswara actually uh, post uh, the Understanding the Sacred Quest uh, program last year. Um, one of the things that came out very powerfully for me was um, um, like every, there was especially, uh, uh, you know, when we were uh, going through uh, Ramya Rasa, right? Um, most of the people in, in, you know, that batch were really full in that sense. Um, they were brimming. Um, they some of us wrote poems. Uh, some of us came up with um, beautiful artwork because of the space that was created. And I very distinctly remember I was feeling terribly empty. Uh, I was feeling like there is um, there's nothing in me to feel that. And I remember at that point of time, Raghu uh, really told me that yeah, Namrata, that's okay. And, you know, when we uh, listen just to know that it's okay to not feel something at some point of time, but feel it at another point of time, whether that is any rasa or any uh, of these seven swaras, just to have that voice in the back of your head that it's okay and it's okay uh, to just be with this level of discomfort that I'm feeling in this moment. I think I gained that only through these programs because I feel like a lot of times there is so much of this pressure. I must be this, I must be this. I must experience fullness. I must experience grace. I must experience this. A lot of times it doesn't happen. And that was one key takeaway for me. And um, uh, yeah, and it also gave me this beautiful community of people like RK, uh, Shruti, um, I have also met uh, Manisha, uh, Monica, Vanaja, Rashmi, I mean, this beautiful community of people, we keep, we keep meeting at couple of intervals, and then we can really see how each of us has not just grown, but there is something which still see, remains same. And it, it's very beautiful to know that there are seekers out there on similar journeys. So um, I really think it's a very nice uh, experience and um, very nice for uh, anyone to take up. Uh, if you have that true seeking and uh, really want to look at yourself. So I really think you, uh, it's, it's good for some of us to take it. I, I want to do it again also, if it's a possibility. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, Namrata. I know we are past 45 minutes. Um, I have shared a link in the chat. You can find the registration form if you feel inclined. Uh, please submit it. Just a heads up, that's a typo in the automated email. It says Gurgaon, ignore that. Once you submit, I'll reach out to you separately. 
but i am happy to hang around uh, maybe for another 5 minutes if there is any questions anything specifically nita a resonance is created when all the sharing happens at each individual level i understand but how does this affect the resonance of the extended community and beyond is there a practice involved in the program for this as well uh nita can i can i uh, address that hari yeah, yeah yes kavita please yeah be a part of the community so any small change that is one other thing you will understand any small covid is a classic example yeah it's not like left anybody of us any one of us so anything that i change at one level or something that happens at my level it definitely has ripple effects it's just that sometimes it's not gross like what we think out to be major advertisements or something but definitely at this fundamental level as i shift as something happens inside we've seen it even in the other sessions today we had a session with akansha and shruti and all they can see that so one of us bring something and it changes in the group and it go you go back into your life and there is a change at your context level definitely and especially saptaswara is uh, not an individual process it is also placed inside a context where are you the dharma swara itself is where are you so the exploration is about uh, exploring you know how is it enlivening me and about and the other and the context so there are practices we do such as but it's not like a practice to take it out into the world as i practice it will permeate through and definitely we are constantly asking you questions to uh, reflect on and journal and saying what would you like to take it out how do you like to take it out so it is it's the framework and practice we provide which you can take it in your own way to the outside definitely hope that answers the question <clears throat> i just wanted to take a minute to share something if there was somebody who was not compassionate to oneself it is me and uh, after going through a few such programs with ratambhara uh, one thing that i developed was to be compassionate on myself and what that resulted was i started being compassionate with the rest of my world and that's changed a whole lot with uh, my outlook to the world and the way i perceive the people around me and my life is i mean it's completely different i know we are running out of time otherwise i would have wanted to share a few more but um, it's an experiential thing and for a specific question of vivek uh, i i again resonate with the resonance point that hari prasad brought about is that you share out of resonance and not out of compulsion and at one point of time once you resonate you can't keep yourself tight you will go ahead and share that's my experience thank you thanks rk and rk is also one of those who took it upon himself to have his entire family take up antaranga yoga which is what earlier manaja was also sharing of the beauty of it so thank you so much for joining today and for staying on even past the 45 minute mark i hope uh, you found the session valuable in understanding what to expect in case you decide to join uh, in the chat there is a link uh, if you wish to go to the sign up page i'll also send you a sp- uh, separate email to all of you where you can find the link and um, let us know how you would like to take this forward and if you wish to join the program we do have 7 to 8 more seats uh, for the coming batch and um, yeah that's it so we'll just end with the three om chant so wherever you're seated just close your eyes you can mute yourself i mean you're all muted so you can chant om
thank you everyone have a good evening and a good weekend thank you everyone thank, thank you very much bye bye, bye.